So I picked up this system on my trip to Korea at this electronics market for 20,000 won or 16 US dollars at the time. It's an IBM G40. It uses a desktop Pentium 4. So it is a little bit of a house fire and requires, well, a special power adapter. Other quirks include a keyboard that has both Korean and Chinese characters. And the size adds a nice contrast to the prior UMPC video. I believe it is one of the Acer manufactured models, but it does seem to be quite durable. So a little bit more about the IBM G40 in particular. The weight of the system is about eight and a half pounds. The system uses a 400 megahertz front size bus Pentium 4, but it does support two gigabytes of RAM. And this model originally had one gigabyte when I found it, which was uh, plenty for 2003. It also has a floppy disk drive and a DVD drive. This system in particular is pretty clean, but um, I will be disassembling it to repaste the processor and install an SSD for modern Debian Linux. So I'm going to replace the likely 21 year old thermal paste but before getting started with that, I decided, well, to check out the BIOS, and luckily it was in English. So, um, after that, I removed the battery, RAM cover, and hard drive, but to replace the system, you need to remove, well, most of the keyboard, the top plastics, and, well, the entire LCD assembly. One odd thing is you have to bend the screen back and use a spudger to remove this piece of metal covering the hinge. There is also one hard to find screw that is required to remove the display that is kind of just hidden in this little corner. The plastic bezel is pretty well built and uh, it is in one piece. And despite the aging plastic, well, it was be able to be removed without worrying too much about it cracking. I disassembled the heatsink and uh, was expecting some sort of massive dust, but surprisingly, this computer was pretty clean. So, this wasn't actually as bad as it sounds, but it did take a bit of time, and I definitely would use a hardware maintenance manual, especially since the G40 is relatively uncommon. So after that, I upgraded both the RAM swaps to 1GB each, and decided on using a MSATA to IDE adapter, and a little bit later, a M.2 to IDE adapter for the solid state drive. The hard drive caddy is pretty easy to adapt and to use my deboot step script and, uh, well, install Debian. I decided on using this, well, nifty adapter, which uh, I set up with my Libreboot T1650. The operating system installation went fairly well, but I had a few issues. No, my uh, processor doesn't exactly have the instruction sets to run most modern uh, web browsers, mainly Chromium derivatives. The next thing was, uh, well, the ST Farfield patch required a little bit of messing around to run on i686. Fortunately, this was a fix that only required a few edits and with some loss in color depth, it ran normally. So the G40 setup is, uh, well, pretty similar to most of my other systems, but to address the web browser issue, I did decide to install NetSurf, which uh, will run pretty much on anything, and Pale Moon. Although, um, side note, uh, the Pale Moon project did have some security issues with their archival releases. The current release should be relatively safe, though. So let's see what Pale Moon can do. We're going to swap out our two screw bits for a reflow station and some hot air guns and check out, well, the former uh, IBM uh, competitor in the laptop sector's website. So I'm going to click on this uh, Apple AR link, mainly because it reminds me of this photo. Although I think I would rather have his setup, to be quite honest. Fitting in with that theme, I found out this laptop will fit fine in a standard laptop bag, and I took it to a coffee shop. 
It surprisingly didn't stick out that much, but the laptop doesn't have, well, Wi-Fi antennas, and it seems to have a whitelist for the mini PCI slot. The Ethernet works great, though. But for Wi-Fi, there are, well, uh, PCMCIA options, and in the past, I've had some luck with just using a USB Wi-Fi adapter, even on these much older systems. I think I tried that on a uh, 380 a long time ago, which is a Pentium 2, so um, a USB Wi-Fi adapter is also another option. Okay, so to demo the unit, I decided, well, to expand my program and wrote a small script to generate a SANIC cellular automation. After running the program, it uses, uh, well, image magic to correct the colors and then FFmpeg to output to a video file. So if you uh, miss the C program from the UmPC video, it's a pretty simple program that does uh, lifelike cellular automation using an images input for the initial world and then creates a series of images from that stored in PBM files, which uh, are then uh, later used with FFmpeg to make the final video. Um, it has been edited on both the G40 and my X201, but it's pretty clean at the moment. The current changes are, well, I did some refactoring. The flag, PBM, and rule struct are now all in separate files. And I also added, uh, well, flags. Specifically for uh, reading the image, uh, reading a rule file, so it can actually go from one rule to the next rule and continue outputting uh, PBMs, output directory, and if a uh, rule file isn't specified, it'll only output one image, essentially with the uh, max generation count. So, either way though, the uh, program does still need some work, but if you're interested in cellular algorithms, LifeWiki is a good resource. The uh, first algorithm is just uh, Maze trick, and this is followed by, well, Conway's Game of Life, and finally one named Slow Blob. Okay, so another thing I noticed is the media keys don't really work with the uh, US keyboard layout, or maybe it's the G40. So there's no volume control. You have to use uh, Pavu control and open it up manually, but uh, the BIOS does seem to recognize them. And it has this nice feature you can use to make it beep. So um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the system all set up at the moment. The software uh, could use a little bit of work. But um, hardware-wise, um, it has a 2.6 gigahertz Pentium 4, which was what it shipped with originally. 2 gigabytes of DDR memory, Intel Extreme Graphics 2, and a 1024 by 768 screen. Also, if anyone has experience with foreign keyboard layouts on older ThinkPads, uh, particularly the G41, um, email me or comment something below, and uh, thanks, peace, and have a good one.